Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. Let me introduce to you the player in the blue. The fan favorite Zerg in the top left, the Swarmzer. She's Scarlet. Challenged by one of the best up and coming Terrans out of Poland, out of Europe, and in the world. We have formerly known as Solid Spirit. Upgrading, I think optimistically there, a best of 5 D V Z between two very macro heavy players i'm excited to see who comes out on top i think i give scarlet the slight edge here though i'll admit that spirit somewhat overshadowed by uh many other terrans um, both in korea and europe though has a few unique attributes that i think make for really interesting games and uh interesting i would say is usually good so good games is what we're focused on. Good games for the fans, even. Something, ideally, you can find pretty much every day here, if you like. And subscribe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Jimmy, what are we at? What? 1,093. If we get 1,093 likes on this video, on this cast, I'll cast another series. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for tuning in. I hope you've had a good day so far. I hope it's about to get... A little bit better. And I'm excited to see what these two have in store. Something a little different. A little, not not dark versus Maru, but probably a bit grittier, a bit messier. And uh, arguably a bit more fun. Spirit not going for the new meta, the fresh meta, but instead opting for the classical Hellion into Banshee. Um... Which is uh, has been a staple of Terran vs. Zerg for uh, essentially since StarCraft 2 Terran vs. Zerg has existed. This 3cc Hellion Banshee opener will get you most of the way up the ladder into Grandmaster and into the final rounds of tournaments with no trouble whatsoever. And then the follow up directly into Stim Pack with uh, now the real question will be more barracks or engineering base. The engineering bays are by far the greediest version. Adding more barracks on is, is more common, as uh, otherwise you have almost no units with which to deal with potential aggression out of the Zerg. Scarlet has 48 drones. She's adding more and overlord speed alongside a lair. But there's a roach warren. Uh, creep spread already heading across the map. And there are no evo chambers. That overlord speed makes me a little, uh, just a little bit suspicious. That this could be a, you know, those queens. Yeah, congregating there. Loitering. Waiting for their opportunity. That is an overseer. Okay, overseer to start. I believe the banshee was spotted by one of the overlords. Which means, and now, oh, there it is. The queens were looking mighty sus. Uh, as they say. But... It's just a straight-up Zergling drop. All right, three Overlords being morphed here. I'm not sure. Wait, wait, wait. Is she going to chase the Banshee? I mean, I, I thought this was where we were going, which is the German taxi build uh, after Lambo, who popularized it and probably came up with it. Sending the Queens across, though. It was a build that originally was designed to deal with early Stargate plays from Protoss. The Starport isn't so much different. Banshees aren't, uh... Uh, you can deal with them in very similar ways, especially since the lair is already done. Well, here come the queens. Spirit. Three SCVs worshipping the orbital, hoping for an answer, but not going to find it. Zergling drops into the main. And Scarlet going to be the aggressor here. Right, double engineering bay at the front is vulnerable. The queens just floating on in, but the overlord, no! They do pop out in time, but there is no creep. Juggling the queens back. A dangerous game, but Scarlet manages to evacuate with all of the queens together, and now they can transfuse once there's a spot of creep to channel it. Overlord, not Overlord, Liberator. Siege is up right on top of the hatchery. Gonna get many of these drones here. Very unfortunate, but no spore crawlers. Was relying almost entirely uh, on being able to do damage on the other side of the map. The queens will pop out. Creep tubers. Well, this is not what I meant when I said uh, Scarlet is quite good about the creep. Um, I, I do think this is a bit of an adjustment from the original attempt at killing Spirit. 
As Scarlet only have 51 drones right now, but having creep at the front of the base, we're going to connect the creep tumors from both sides. Advanced creeping here with Scarlet. Oh, and that I contaminate. Scarlet break. I see. Well, this is certainly a different style of Zerg. Very dark. I don't even think I've seen dark use this sort of strategy, really. Scarlet with a brand all her own. As, well, the creep could be cleared up, but definitely an awkward situation. There's not very much at all back at home. The Marines will stim in and gun down a bunch of the drones. And, uh, wow, oh my. Wow, 38 drones down. So many drones, Jimmy isn't even showing me the workers killed count on the side, which I don't, I don't think was added for this game, but she's down to 41, which is devast- it's terrible, terrible damage. This is nearly game-ending damage. If Scarlet didn't already have so many roaches out in the field, then this would be potentially a GG moment. The scans will actually be able to isolate and clear out the tumors. So the back creeping idea is uh, dead in the water for now. Scarlet in a very awkward scenario here as she has to replenish that drone count. She's got mediocre roaches. You know, the contaminate on the engineering bay may help out a lot. It might be a bit of a bit more meaningful than it seemed in the long run as Spirit has taken his time getting to the 1-1 one, one upgrades, giving Scarlet an opportunity to catch up. But when you're going roaches uh, against a Terran with standard marine tank, and your supply is less... Now, of course, you don't know that in the game, but we can see from here that Spirit is lining up to have a very difficult-to-deal-with army. Scarlet, I do appreciate the attempt, but there's a reason that, that sending queens across the map and uh, not getting any upgrades is not a popular Zerg strategy. And that's because people hate fun. I'm sorry, let me rephrase. It isn't optimal. Uh, it is too costly to pay off usually in a timely manner. Even if your opponent does go for the Banshees. And here, Spirit. I think Spirit a little bit more afraid than he needs to be about a follow-up attack. And maybe underestimating the amount of economic damage you managed to do with the drops and the rum buys with the Hellions. Infestation pit on the way. Another macro hatch. Actually, the first macro hatch, but that's a lot of Marines! More than enough to take out the fourth base with minimal losses. From here, Spirit. Retreating with the quad medevac. Three more racks on the way. And the rest of the Marines also clearing out the creep. Scarlet, contained. Made her way up to 72. That is a lot. The Banshee's killing the destructible rock tower. There are 68 Marines on the field. And more coming out of the racks. It's a, it, we're looking at nearly 100 Marine game here. 71. It's just Marines. And Scarlet has essentially sprinted. Maybe not sprinted, but lumbered quickly to investors. And with them, well, that's a major threat to this ball of Marines. Scarlet will have enough units to match it, but it, it is on her to find the right fight. As Spirit is going to have 2-2 two, two upgrades, taking a fourth base now. Mainling speed is about to complete, but plus one melee is all that's going to be on the field. The Banshee. Only five kills, but its existence continues to make things difficult for Scarlet. I do feel like Spirit has somewhat missed an opportunity to get the damage done. It's hard to tell exactly how much I'm able to accomplish, but the, the boat uh, of damage against Scarlet has sailed a while ago, and now Spirit has a bit of a... Awkward unit composition for combating uh, infestors overall. With this many Marines, there are no Vipers on the field. 27 Banelings are completing on the other side of the map, which means Scarlet will be losing yet another hatchery. Still, that is a lot of Marines, and there are no Vipers. Scarlet's maxed out with plenty of Banelings. 
There's no real benefit to waiting here. She's maxed out and goes up the ramp. Mainlings from both sides, trying to roll through. Still some creep to work with. The Marines are more than far enough back, though. The majority of them survived the initial wave. Is the Roach Ravager going to be able to clean it up? Plus two Carif is done. The Infestors threw out a fungal or two, but for the most part were cleaned up with relative ease. And Spirit joins up with another army. Ghosts have arrived. The siege tanks were taken out, but the creep has receded as well. Scarlet starts some vipers, but they're not around yet. The infestors regaining energy, but still a few seconds off, having another fungal growth. And without it, it's going to be very difficult to pin down this army. Another wave. Scarlet Adrenal Glands not quite completed yet for the Zerglings. Where are the Infestors? Banshee's still finding some damage. Picks up most of the units there. Spirit not able to find that critical mass yet again, but still keeping Scarlet contained. There's another drop to the bottom left corner. Plus three infantry weapons and armor nearing halfway done. Scarlet plus two melee attack is finishing up soon. But Spirit has kept the pressure on. Scarlet struggling to really do anything but hold on to her core four bases. But four bases is more than she had some minutes ago. And the fifth base now looks like it's going to be safe enough. Spirit has a fifth base with a planetary about to complete. Another command center on the way nearby. The Zerglings, the Banelings, the counterattack potential is there, but with a siege tank and a bunker... Spirit should at least be able to deal with most of it. Forward turrets becoming quite a, a common sight here. Something to deal with potentially burrowed and festers. No burrow yet for Scarlet. So not really a threat there as of yet, but plus three, plus three about to complete, but Spirit is maxed out. Gonna go for another fight. Blinding Cloud on the center line here. A bit of a waste there. Two blinding clouds, almost the same spot. Parasitic bomb on some of the medevac. Zerglings from the back. Banelings rolling in. But the Marines and Marauders so far looking good enough. One fungal comes through. The Ravagers will collapse on the tanks. But we got to ask ourselves the eternal question. At what cost? Quite a difficult fight for Scarlet, who's now lost 2,500. More resources. Snipes. Onto the Ravagers, Ghosts able to knock them down. Corrosive Bile, Spray and Pray, knocks out another Medivac. But Liberator showing up to the party uninvited. Spirit starting to grind out a supply lead yet again. Ravagers, the survivors knock down the Liberator that shows up. But down to two Ravagers, and without them, dealing with the set pieces like Siege Tanks and Liberators is going to become a lot more difficult. That is until the Hydralisks, which have joined the production tab. That is until the Hydras are on the field. No Lurker Den, just straight up Hydraling Bane. A long and and uh, almost imperceptible transition into the Ling Bane Hydra army. But at the end of the day, we will be looking at that more conventional army composition. Spirit, kind of the same. We do have a fusion core done, but clearly for advanced ballistics here for the Liberators. Interested in adding a bunch more on something very difficult to deal with on mass, even with hydralisks. So we'll see how Scarlet decides to handle that. As there's not any on the field yet, and two four, it's really double digits is when things get particularly scary. But here comes Scout again, lining up another wave. Creep spread mostly receded off this location. Blinding cloud, no parasitic bombs yet. EMPs found some. Yanks out another tank. Ghosts will cloak. And some of them have to be picked up as there is an overseer to deal with it. A, a decent fight for Scarlet, but a double drop in the bottom left is going to undercut things significantly. Another Liberator as well. This one racking up the kills. Drone suffering. Scarlet back down to 66. And dwindling. She's lost 69 drones so far, which is a nice kill count for Spirit. Keeping Scarlet's economy quite low. Despite the fact she's she's met oh my god. The creep tumors have prevented the landing of Spirit's base at the six o'clock. The uh just ridiculous amount uh, not not so ridiculous, but you can really tell how spread out the tumors are. Very efficient at this stage of the game is 
I don't know how many queens are left. Only three queens on the map, but 141 zerglings. As well as 28 banes, so 170 or so of lings in various varieties. Which is a ridiculous number. There we go again. Scarlet looking for more snipes. This time the vipers are going to be taken out. One widow mine on the front. Another mine. Blunting the force of the front line here. And Spirit manages to snipe off meaningful spellcasters. But still has been unable to take the 6 o'clock base because of the creep. So Scarlet is marching forward. She's held on. It, it, whatever advantage Spirit once had, both in upgrades, economy, and unit composition, it was a little bit all three, has dwindled. And now is almost non-existent. Scarlet has lost a few thousand more minerals, but actually slightly less gas here. Widow Mines added in an incredibly double-edged grenade, like most grenades. As, oh, that one looking very good. Knocks out at over a dozen Zerglings. Nearly all losses there for the Zerg, nothing for the Terran. But Scarlet continues to spread the creep in towards the third base. Neo Steel armor done for the bunkers in the buildings. Zerglings overrun the siege tank. The creep continues to spread. Liberators will siege up an overlapping Quadra Venn diagram of freedom. We'll deny the Hydras and Lynx, but the command center still standing well, idling by in the air. And no sign of creep clear anytime soon. The creep continues to spread. As Scarlet arduously moving forward, but yet another wave is lined up. A lot of lings and banes, some infestors ready. Enough for at least one, maybe two fungals apiece. Targets down one, looking for more with the siege tanks. Doesn't quite finish it off. One group of marines taken out. Liberators late to sieging up here. And the creep continues to spread. Hydras, lings, banes. At the third base here, Scarlet encroaching on all sides. The Widow Mines will find an opportunity. And the counterattack is shut down for now. A parasitic bombed liberator, I believe with advanced ballistics, was denying the mining in the bottom left corner, but at the end of the day... Oh my god, the creep has spread so far forward. Spirit missed the creep tumor. The most uh, forward one. Warnings and Banes, Hydras, Ravagers, try to knock down the Liberators. Doing an okay job so far. One, two, three Hydras, enough. Banelings rolling through and Spirit Supply will plummet. The Liberators have been whittled down to almost nothing. Okay, actually nothing. There are none left. The, the Marines and Tanks, well, only the Marines are left. Widow Mines have helped stall Scarlet's attacks, but I think the Tanks are the choice. Uh, in the, the more ultra late game overall. As Widow Mines are just, well, annoying to deal with. Scarlet's economy remains strong. She's rebuilt it after all those attacks. Spirit did not press the advantage in time, and now Scarlet, with an overwhelming amount of Zerg. Spirit managed to replenish his supply pretty well. He's still got two mining bases, but finally this command center is cleared up. The creep recedes for now. It's only going to take one more good fight. Widow Mine dragged into the Terran army. More Hydras in production. A whole lot of DPS from the back line. Siege tanks pushed forward. Queens brought up. I wonder why. Parasitic bomb doing damage across all the medevacs. Blinding cloud negates the tanks. And the Hydra count is just so damn high. Yanks in a tank from the back line. The ghost firing line is not enough to cut into the mass of Hydralis. And I think Scarlet's done it. After the uh, ambitious queen drop early, she retakes that part of the map 15 minutes later. And the creep continues to spread. Spirit. The oppressive weight uh, of the creep constantly at his doorstep. Oh my god, the beautiful fungal wombo combo! 
Here come the Hydras to finish things off, and the last attempt to do anything about it is evaporated. Scarlet outclassing Spirit a bit here in game one, able to overwhelm the Terran. I really thought Spirit had a, an opportunity there, but that does not bode well as time goes on. Unable to match Scarlet on the field. I don't really know, like, Scarlet just picked her battles so well that Spirit was really, he never really got the core of ghosts. If you're going to sit back, it's ghosts. That's the answer, by the way. If you're answer, asking the question of how would you deal with uh, ghosts, there's really not too many questions that don't have that as an answer as Terran. But Scarlet is able to pick apart the more conventional army despite some difficulties early. And that means Scarlet is out to a one-game lead as we go into altitude. No two racks opener. I I love the queen drop. I wish my favorite, personally, is the speed overlord, the single queen escort. Alright. Um the uh with a single overlord dropping creep and having speed. So you have this queen essentially marking out plots of creep. Uh, maybe two queens. But you just go around the map with it. I don't think the original intent of the attack was I don't think it was to, um, it, it was to, to spread creep. The original intent was potentially a killing blow against a Terran who had minimal units because they were going 3cc in the Banshee. It was to take out the Banshee and then work on the rest. But, instead, it became something a little different. And honestly, Scarlet in very scarlet fashion but also a bit painful to watch was um losing like 35 drones to it. six hellions and a marine drop that was nearly game ending but she bounced back two wrecks on two base here scarlet sees the reactor timing did not see there's two and two in gas. This is like, um... Oh, it's a command center first. Okay. As I was too busy pontificating as opposed to actually commentating. Deliberating. Other... No. Factory other way, so it's going to be a uh, command center first two one one. Two medevacs, fellow stim marines, but just a bit more of an economical start, and uh, compounded by a third command center slapped right out of that fancy backpack by the SCV. See, I've been playing so much satisfactory lately. I think of Terran as the uh, Satisfactory character. Uh, the way, obviously, it's explained since Satisfactory is a prequel to StarCraft um, is it's a pocket dimension. Okay. They have... Uh, and, and then they just take the resources out of their pocket dimension and slap it down. Of course, if you don't have the resources, you can't build the building. Um, but if you have the resources somewhere, they just get transported into the dimension and that's how the, the construction begins. It's science. Look at read a book. Starport completed. Reactor for the medevacs on the way. Now Spirit looking to put on the pressure a lot earlier here. Scout it with a baneling nest. No lair. 51 drones. I think she's figured out what she's, or has a good idea of what she's dealing with, at least. Seeing the reactor on the barracks at that timing may have given some of this away. Though, the commitment to Ling Bane indicates to me that she's figured this out a lot. Like, all she's seen is the reactor on the racks and a lack of Hellions, which is a bit of a giveaway in and of itself. 
No spore crawlers at all. So, very sure that she's dealing with a marine timing and not that surprising off the command center first. And we'll be more than ready for it. 54 drones, which is a small number for Scarlet. Uh, and plenty of Zerglings on the field to potentially crush this, especially alongside. Oh my god! The Queen Moot has gathered. There are nine queens in total, but that's not the end of it. Siege tank on the high ground will protect the third. The marines dropped out of the medevacs, out of range of the queens, but the range of the queens getting a little bit closer by the moment as the creep continues to spread. 1-1 one, one begins. Spear can have about a 30 second advantage overall on those upgrades, at least to start, but the medevac poked by, uh, Enough knitting needles to bring it into the red as the queen's looking for their vengeance. Macro hatch. Double macro hatch? The Brood War dark esque style of uh, really relying on those Zerglings, but giving yourself more than enough ability to produce them. And Scarlet just shuts down the medevac drop. It expands the drone count behind it. Adds on the fourth hatchery. And this early marine timing. Oh my god! That is a new one. That's kind of a weird angle to wall off your own siege tank. Seeing all these pros wall off their siege tanks makes me feel a lot better. Uh, about my own play. I'm a master player. Grand master at walling off my own tanks. Can he not build it, or is he just supply mod? All right. The Marine can get through, which is extra insulting. Another base attempt, and Spirit will shut it down. Spirit doesn't know about the bottom right corner. May very well... Like, this base was a little late for a fourth, but overall, still... May think he shut down the fourth base, and will be sorely mistaken if he doesn't scout that bottom right angle. The Queens targeted. One taken down. Another one, though. Transfuse has come through. Plenty of energy. Tank. He built a depot there. That is certainly a way to solve it. He built a depot there, so the tanks have no... Oh. The tanks have no choice but to pop out in the right spot. It does work, but that also reminds me of my satisfactory solutions to logistical problems. All right, we'll just put something in front of it so you know it's not supposed to go there. I'm sure we'll remember that. Nothing more permanent than a temporary solution. All right, another tank push coming through. 1-1 one, one done for both sides. Scarlet hasn't yet found space to start 2-2, two, two, which could add up over time, but the most important thing is defending this tank push. Spirit certainly found the fourth base, by the way. Trying to set up a surround. Lings and Banes looking for the wrap around here. Spirit with a nice spread here. I can't believe it's not butter. Ooh, here comes the first wave. Micro's back. The Marines starting to stack up for the Banelings. No more siege tanks here. Trying to target fire, but far too many Banelings to take out. The tanks were cleared off the field. The Marines forced to evacuate. Liberators heading up. Trying to reinforce the push. Spirit unwilling. Whoop, the Rube Goldberg machine was triggered. Watchtower destroyed. Which, honestly, I think that might be why Scarlet did it. Now, that's a lot of... Oh, beautiful targeting, but not beautiful enough. Or was it? Well, that's still so many Hydras. Only, like, one Baneling connected in all this. So many Marines coming up. As Spirit managed to target those Banelings under a lot of pressure. But there were still so many Hydras on the back line. That Scarlet has overwhelming DPS and is able to run over the army for now. 2-2, Two -two, though, finishing up for Spirit and kind of in a reverse of the previous game. Even though Spirit's been in a bit of a tough spot, uh, he's, he's held strongly and has still a dangerous army with really solid decision-making, just not quite enough units. His micro on point against those veins. And that is very annoying for a Zerg, because you suddenly have to build, like, 50% more Banes, just to be sure. Um, well, not particularly expensive, but it does add up.
Oh my god, the gold base is being taken. Scarlet, taking down those rocks. Unlock the gold. Hydra's Lings and Banes will look to match the Marines on the left flank. Queens will zone them out. Uh, the medevacs out of the main. Another double drop sent out from the right flank. 3-3 three, three begins for Spirit. Scarlet closing in on 2-2, two, two, and she's maxed out, so getting to be that time. Uh, nowhere else to go but forward. Not way infestation, but is a long way off. We're not waiting for Hive Tech here. Third base is bullied out of the way, but Spirit going to undercut this dramatically. Ooh, down goes one medevac. A bit supply block to Spirit, but takes out the fourth base in the bottom right, as well as 12 drones alongside it. 50 more Zerglings in production as Scarlet refills the army. But Spirit has successfully stalled the attack and dragged the army. Oh no! Another full medevac taken down. And that'll slow down any action on the left side. Now Scarlet to re-expand. Wants to deal with the medevacs here over to the right. Oh no! Another one! Oh god, these are these are mistakes you cannot afford against a maxed out Zerg who's just more than ready. And also Scarlet has the gold, so even if she ends up losing those side bases, the income is uh, about to get out of control. She's got 70 drones, but more than made up for by the gold base. And Spirit may be losing one if not more mining locations, and he'll be lucky if that's the end of it. Planetary Fortress, not anymore, say the Banes, very quickly before they slam into it, ending both their lives. Hydra's taking out isolated siege tanks. Siege tanks don't even have plus one mech weapons. Another round of Banes loading up over to the right flank. And another medevac taken out to the out of the sky as the creep continues to spread. Hydra's lings of Banes! Siege tanks no well the the Marines actually stand their ground and gun down the Banes on the left. But over to the right, there's not nearly enough Marines to stop the tide. As Scarlet rolls over Spirit's third. Another attempt. 3-3, three, three, about to complete for Spirit, but he can't even build any more units. Has he walled off another tank? No. I think it's just the angle, though. Oh, but there's... Wait. Why are there three tanks moving out at a time? Maybe they're on the high ground, I'm not sure. I would give him the benefit of the doubt, but I feel like we lost that a while ago. There's over a hundred Zerglings on the field. And counting. There's still room for some more. No Adrenal Glands yet. Random Hydra rolls up, but plenty of Lings and Banes rolling in. Another planetary down. Spirit overrun. Siege tanks. Setting up for more, but... Spirit, the army supplies are actually even right now. Well, that was right up until Scarlet went back to Zergling production. It's not gonna get any easier. Spirit realizes it's just a slow death, so he chooses either victory or a quick one. Ah, <sighs> well. The siege tank's not entirely sieged. The creep has not receded. Scarlet is here and the banelings are rolling in the siege tanks overrun the marines retreating back up to the high ground but there's just not enough the queens are here as well and the creep continues to spread the surviving marines are evacuated his spirit not willing to go out quite yet the ambitious attack but possibly the only option was shut down and swept from the field. Spirit has enough production and economy to make a go of it, but it's gone from desperate to um, divine intervention required. As Scarlet is still maxed out, Spirit meeting with even less good target fire from the siege tanks limits the baneling count. But a near infinite supply of Zerglings continues across the map anyways. Adrenal Glands finishes in two seconds, one seconds. 
It's complete. The Hydra's lings and banes will refill. The creep will continue to spread. And... Oh, spirit. Medivac's out of energy. Plus two ranged attack for the Hydras. There aren't too many on the field. No lurkers at all. Hydraling Bane clearly cutting it for now. No plus three melee for Scarlet. Maybe a bit of an oversight. Uh, she, well, maybe only has two Evo chambers, yeah. And went for the ranged attack upgrades. But here come plus three attack of both flavors. Vipers on the field. Scarlet done throwing everything away. Wants to make it a little bit more fair for the Zerglings and Banelings. The siege tanks, unable to participate in the group activity, will be overrun without firing a shot. And a GG is tapped out. His spirit is run down. In game two, Scarlet just far too much. And that is match point, just like that. I say just like that, though. It was, it's been an arduous process. Scarlet not overextending, but definitely... Uh, on the ragged edge of cost efficiency. I don't know, like, Spirit just not, uh, he, does, he doesn't add in Marauder, I think. There's one thing I'm noticing. No Marauders, well, at all in that last game. And very few in the one before it. While Marines technically, very technically, have more DPS, the Marauders are, are just the meat shields. Um, that can absorb some of the bane legs. That, I, I mean, also losing uh, an extra set of medevacs probably didn't help too much. But overall, Scarlet not missing a beat, whereas Spirit a little off tempo. And so far, that's we're at risk of going home somewhat early here today. Is Scarlet up two to zero? Going to be a command center first into the double gas. Looks like Spirit might try a similar strategy again. Scarlet seemed very well aware of the strat and how to deal with it. And uh, unlike game one, was in the driver's seat the entire time. Command centers upgrading. The Overlord spotted the barracks timing, which gives away the fact this is indeed a command center first. Though it is a factory to follow it up. Gonna be a Reaper. And then I imagine a reactor. No longer have to imagine. It's right there. It is fun as... Since Scarlet, one of the very few really competitive North American players. Seeing her... No, no, don't say it. I know this might not be live, but that doesn't... Seeing her just outright, in many ways, outclass. Maybe not the best European Terran player, but definitely um, at the top tier as well. And Scarlet right now looking very very solid relying on just sheer macro as as is well wanted to win that game one with with the queen drops but alas starport on the way third command center already in production only a few pixels out of range of the overlord just needs to pick its head up take a look around Reaper. No box out the Zerglings for now. Second one hunted down by the Hellions. Roasted. Charbroiled, as they say. Overlord comes in, spots the upgrading tech lab on the on the starport. Spots the third command center timing. Scarlet now. 
Yeah, so about all the information you could ask for, Sisirk. There is... That is a quick layer. Oh no, is she doing it again? There's a, there's no roach warning. Oh, that maybe just for overseers? Possibly mutas? Usually, uh, if you're looking for a more economic response, you just go for the spore crawlers, not necessarily rushing out of lair. Um, but it's on the table. Down goes the reaper to the hellions. The banshee comes out, though. There is no other tech, which is very, um, looks like it's just for the overseer. Does not want to deal with that banshee. Interesting. Roach Warren now being produced. Banshee Cloak done. Overlord strongly suggested leave the base. Hellions get a little too deep on the creep. And the Zerglings and Queens will easily wrap around and crush them. Uh, a bit greedy there from Spirit results in another set of units being shut down. Two Toy Depot out in front. A spotter there. Five more gases up. Let me see it, Scarlet. Where's my spire? Where is it? There is a roach. Like, are we really gonna go six gases? I know there's Evo Chambers finish. Six gases into roaches. Maybe I guess roach infester. There's the upgrades, taking up most of that gas, but six gas. She's got 70 drones in six minutes. And and counting, by the way. And, uh, two banshees, yes, but... A few SCVs went down to Zerglings. A few more drones will go down to banshees. Scarlet up to near 80 drones in six and a half minutes, which is just obscenely greedy. Now, does the spirit have any method of punishing it? He's got one one on the way. Metavax on the way out as well. Starts combat shield. I assume stim is done. I assume correctly. So, she may get away. 82 drones! At, so, for, for reference, for your average Metal League player, I recommend 50 drones by 7 minutes. By seven minutes, getting 50 drones. I say, and I've I've shown that getting to diamond, easy. You get 70 drones by seven minutes. Not 70, 50 drones. Wait, no, did I say 70? I don't even remember the number anymore. But it's a lot less than 86 drones by seven minutes. That's my point that I've diluted dramatically now. In fact, 86 drones is pushing the max number of drones to ever build at any point. Maybe about 90. Uh, occasionally you'll see more than that, but it starts really eating into your army supply. So here we are. Scarlet with about as many drones as you'd ever need. The creep continues to spread. And more bases are being taken. Not much has really happened, but... Spirit is pinned back. 1-1 one, one now done. And Scarlet will be the aggressor. The Banshees will cloak, which... I mean, makes it a little more annoying, I guess. Meanwhile, Zerglings running in towards the natural. Siege tanks taken out by the Corrosive Bile. More will be targeted as well. The Banshees are adding on a lot of damage here. Scarlet fully know it, like... Uh, fully realizing this will not be a game-ending push. Trying to do as much damage as she can. And line up Spirit for another potentially series-ending series wave. Ah, or, you know, just going Hive and getting Vipers as well works. Here we go. Double drop heading out for Spirit, but the creep itself will continue to spot it. Now, Banshee's trying to deal with it, but it's everywhere. 
Wow. Will the drop be spotted? Oh, there's an overlord right there. So yes, I thought the creep tumors might do, but the overlord is covering the edges where creep. Unfortunately, creep cannot fly. Mostly because queens cannot. Much to their dismay. Another drop coming in to clear up the right side. Roach is more than in position to infect the queens from the high ground, from their balcony. Almost taking out a medevac. Another drop trying to clear up the left. Where's the scan? Just heading in towards the fourth, but the creep tumors give so much vision. That Scarlet already able to maneuver. Wait, not sending back. Kind of, uh... Diverted the wrong set of units there for a moment, but the hatchery still will stand without too much damage. Scarlet sending out the rest of the units forward. Corrosive Bile coming out onto the Orbital Command as well. Siege tanks taken out. Zerglings cleared up, but more roaches and ravagers. And the creep continues to spread. Roaches, lings, and plenty. Well, there's no banelings at all. This is a baneless game so far. The Scarlet relying on sheer army supply, but Spirited 2 2 versus 1 1. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Viper's on the way, but Scarlet may have bitten off a little bit more bio than she can chew. As right now, Spirit actually has 113 army supply, a 2 2 marine tank, and Marauders on the field. Yes, Marauders, clearly for the Roaches, but. Adding a lot of potential and with concussive shells can help slow down a lot of the army uh, and make it a little easier to digest here. And the Vipers, Scarlet losing a lot of army supply before the Vipers were able to participate. And now Spirit pressing forward. The creep is overwhelming, but really just thriving off the sheer mass of army supply. Vipers consuming in a very precarious position. Vipers over the top. Blinding Cloud on the ramp here, but Spirit on hold position, I think, with many of the Marines. Uh, at least had them pre-spread to deal with it. The Banelings not able to quite close the distance. Scarlet is trying to come down a ramp right now. The Marines thinning out, but the Medivac starting to really make the difference. Well... It seems like there was just enough Roach Ravager. Okay. And again, Scarlet takes maybe a cost inefficient fight, but that could very well lead to winning the war. And I was a bit concerned, clearly, uh, of coming down the ramp into a siege tank concave. Some horror stories uh, have begun. Or at least ended there. But Scarlet, with more than enough roaches and ravagers, and 90 drones to back it up. And Spirit is back to three bases, and even that center base is still alive. So Scarlet able to remax out Spirit at 150. The Banshees are the real MVPs. Still alive throughout all this. The Banshees existing. Almost ended there, but Parasitic Mob might be able to edit. Double drop at the back. Picks up. There are four Metavags here. And GG! Scarlet takes it. Three to zero. Wow. Did not. Hmm. Spirit just overrun by Scarlet. Oh, Jimmy. What do you mean? Okay. We, we, we need to put a bonus game up? I really didn't expect... I didn't have that prepared. I, because, well, I did not expect a 3-0 from Scarlet. But, um, how about the next one in the replay pack? We have Max Packs versus Gumiho for the bonus game. I think, I think they'll be okay with that. Um, I didn't... You see, I try not to spoil myself beforehand on these series. Uh, at least too much. I just assumed it would not be A3. But anyways, Max Max versus Gumiho.
to pad things out and make it not so obvious. You guys have, the bonus games have been well received. Congratulations to Scarlet, by the way. Um, on that 3-0 victory. I don't want to undercut as that was a just dominant performance. Spirit overrun and uh, just eclipsed by Scarlet's Eunice overall. And I don't think Spirit was, well, there were some mistakes clearly from Spirit, but Scarlet just constantly managing the uh, the hardest part of Zerg and, and players like Serral and occasionally Dark, though Dark not so much, make it look easy. The hardest part is knowing when not to fight, even if you're maxed out. But Scarlet setting up those huge surrounds and just crushing those armies in between the Ravager's Ling, Bane Ling, and then Vipers to as a crowbar to pry the, the turtle open. Alright. So, I think there's a non-zero chance I may end up casting this series if we get to 1,093 likes, but a bonus for those... Because, uh, I mean, Gumi Hell versus Max Packs, come on. But... Um, I was caught somewhat off guard because Jimmy did not warn me that Scarlet was going to crush Spirit so hard. So... Max Pack's walling off the front. Adept shading across preemptively. There's a shield battery in the main. Just completes the shade, which means Gumio will have a little time. Actually gets a probe here. Twilight counts on the way. Just... Mm. So how long does it take one shield battery to get to the, or one reaper to get to the center of the shield battery's energy bar? The answer is longer than Gumio had here. Expanding to the high ground. Was this? No, I, well, it's two ga gas on one base now, but we get Max Pax looking like he's headed towards blank, but Dark Shrine is still on the table. There's the blink. And Gumi Ho. Widow Mine Drop seems to be the intent. Second barracks already being built. And Reaper headed around. Three racks as the immediate follow-up. Robo on the way. This is a pretty cookie cutter. Two base pressure out of max packs. We got four gateways, a robo, warp prism. Oh wait, not on the I'm sorry, I'm telling the future again. But warp prism on the way. Okay, I'll give you 30 seconds from now. Warp prism on the way. Uh, a tech lab being added to the starport and the factory. Uh, and the widow mine drop coming out. Gumiho. What? Second medevac. He's not gonna go for the tech lab? I guess the medevac is important. Kind of a weird setup. <gasps> oh my god, actually, this is worth saying. This isn't a cookie cutter game. Gumiho's setup. He's quarantining his base. I don't know how I feel about this. But he's clearly quarantining his base. He's actually kind of hard walled in. This side of the base. Then he gives it away to the adept here. Citizens arrest. SCVs will stop it for now, but I love the production line in every sense of the word there from Gumiho. Beautifully done. We'll see how that affects the blink. The problem is he's on the side of the map where the add-ons are exposed, so he will have to cut through. Tries to distract with the Reaper. May do so successfully. Max Pack's a little bit late, but a beautiful split there. Deals with the mine. And uh, so far has mostly negated the potential damage. Retargeting. Retar recalculating. Recalculating. Blinks out. Those several stalkers tied up at home. And Gumiho able to deal 
Uh, he buys himself time before the blink comes in. And that means he's going to have a lot of bio here with stim and combat shield. Here come the stalkers. Headed towards the main. And, uh, yeah, this is kind of... It looks like the wall off here is kind of hurting Gumiho more than helping. As his bio units had to run all the way around, he ends up losing a few more SCVs. There's another group of Blink Stalkers. They're going with the double Blink Stalker pressure. This is a very... Uh... Difficult to pull off as as the bio units are very liable to snap up small groups of stalkers and just obliterate them. Widow Mind Drop comes in again. Max Packs looking the wrong way. Oh no! Devastating hit. Ten probes down and loses no stalkers on the field, but ten probes down is just too many. At the end of the day, it's the Widow Mind Drop that does the real damage here. And the bio army. Max Pax is going for charge. Without a better economy, he does not have better units. The bio army will win with even army supplies. And it's not even. Gumio has 20 more. Widow Mind Drop comes in for another round. Will deny mining while the bio army moves up. Which is denying Max Pax the ability to micro against it. As uh, he was focused on dealing with the mine. Gumiho. Shield battery overcharge used already. Medivac joins up with the army as well. And Max Pax, does he have a Guardian Shield? He throws out a Force Field, which will strongly inconvenience a handful of the bio units. But the battery overcharge runs out, plus one infantry weapons is done, and Marauders are pounding their way through. Pretty much the only survivors here. But the Goomy Rotters, the Goomer Rotters, no, no, none of those words work. But he, it looks like Max is going to have to pack his bags and head on out of this one. As Gumi Ho just blasts his way through a concise, yet dramatic game to cap things off and, and uh, make sure we can truly appreciate Scarlet's victory over Spirit. I hope you guys enjoyed um, a cookie cutter bonus game after a dramatic series from Scarlet with some of the best Zerg macro that I've seen, uh, especially outside of like Cyril or Dark. So good to see Scarlet in form. And good to see you here again at the end of the video. Making sure you autoplay the right video. One of mine. Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. I hope, Jimmy. 1,093. 1,093 likes. Cast another series. Probably do that. Maybe Gloomy Hill versus Max Pax. Though that wasn't a great game. So who knows about that one. But thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Uh, good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.